whenever you're discussing fiscal policy, one of the more interesting topics that comes up is the legalization of marijuana, right? Um, one of the pivotal, or maybe I should say one of the uh, major points that are brought up with uh, marijuana legalization is this idea that it would be a boon in tax revenue. Whenever you're talking about fiscal policy, it's in a discussion about government financing, and government financing is largely done on taxes. Some of it is fees as well, but a large amount of it is taxation. So when we're talking about revenue opportunities, people often like to cite marijuana legalization as a revenue opportunity. And it's no wonder, right? It's um, an illicit substance that is very commonly used, especially in the urban centers of the country. And the idea is if the market exists already, why not take advantage of that? Why not um, try to see if you can both eliminate a black market and also create a revenue opportunity that could even possibly help the states figure out a way to deter people from using it, or at least create an environment where the people who are using it are consenting adults who know the risks and take responsibilities for their actions. So right now I wanna tackle a bit of the fiscal side of this. And for New York, that's where I'm gonna focus on specifically. Uh, we should have a sober idea of what, the, what marijuana legalization would mean. First off, there are a couple of components to it, right? This isn't just a fiscal policy, it's also a socioeconomic policy in general. So there are opportunities for people who are typically on the losing end of the socioeconomic spectrum from a marijuana legalization. Um, for example, in New York State, uh, statewide in the first half of 2019, Black and Latino people accounted for 75% of the arrests for low-level marijuana, um, despite being only 33% of the state's population. Um, in New York City, the overall number of marijuana arrests did fall in the first half of 2019, but the racial disparities grew, with 93% of those arrested for low-level marijuana uh, profession being Black or Latino. And the arrest rate of state doubled from 1990 levels. And the young are typically the ones who are predominantly at uh, risk for suffering the legal ramifications of marijuana use and possession. In 2018, youth 25 and younger accounted for 58% of all the low marijuana arrests, despite being only 31% of the state's population. Those stats you can pull up pretty easy from drugpolicy.org uh, on their website for the New York marijuana reform section. Um, so there are at least social, social opportunities in legalizing marijuana and that we could probably get rid of the vast majority of those arrests and reduce the amount of people who are people of color and young and reduce their interactions with law enforcement is what I should say, reduce the amount of those folks who are constantly in criminal justice interactions, both preserving resources for the fiscal side and also creating an environment that's a little less hostile for these groups. Um, thinking about the resources, right, there are a couple of things to consider. One was what I just brought up, which is the resource savings, the public safety cost savings. Um, the number of misdemeanor arrests in New York City by 2016 were around 21,457, and that's dropping from a peak of 55,623 in 2010. Uh, the Drug Policy Alliance has estimated that per arrest costs as at least $2,000, which, according to the Comptroller's Office for the city, uh, could yield savings of $36 million or more a year. Now, put that into perspective, right? As we've been talking about throughout the semester, everything has to be in the context of your size of the economy. In this case, let's at least consider the context of the size of the budget. The city budget in 2019, I'm sorry, fiscal year 2020, was roughly $92 billion. So in the context of that, $36 million isn't a drop in the bucket, but it's also not something to bend over backwards for. 
um, for the entire state. We get estimates from the comptroller's office for the city that the entire state, depending on the tax rate assigned and how the marijuana would be taxed, that they could potentially see up to an over $400 million in uh, tax revenues. For the city, that would be around $336 million. Again, all depending on what is done with the taxation, how it's taxed, what the rates are. Um, and that doesn't include the savings that will be accumulated from reducing the interactions with police departments. These numbers are pretty much in line with what you would see coming from uh, other states. So, for example, Washington in 2018 made around 319 million, Cali 300 million, and the numbers kind of go down from there. Um, I guess the point being made here is that if we are turning towards marijuana legalization as a fiscal policy option, it maybe shouldn't just be in the context of tax revenues, right? Like tax revenues are great, always good to uh, rely a little bit less on deficit spending for uh, our activities. But the gains made from marijuana legalization might be a lot more concentrated in areas dealing with the socioeconomic side, such as how many, well, socioeconomic, right? So a little bit more in the economic spectrum of that, how many more people will have less interactions with the police and how much less will we have to spend on police enforcement. Uh, ranging from that all the way to the more social side of how much more opportunity do we unlock for people who may not have to deal with records or the stigmatization of being involved with the justice system and now being able to enter the legal workforce. Uh, and with that said, we have to consider what had held up marijuana legalization in 2019 for the state. And that was in part the fact that there was a disconnect between the legalization aspect and the, um, and the part of this that would make up for the criminal justice violations that had been done to people. If we are gonna legalize marijuana, can't just be in the context of legalizing and forgetting about people who have prior been arrested or legalizing and only creating opportunities for the groups who aren't in those typically marginalized group areas. So with that said, there's a lot to consider with legalization, tax revenues involved included, but also got to consider the socioeconomic side.